Hello mortals. Back in the 19th century, life was easy. If you were on top of a moving train running and shooting outlaws to get to your factory job that exploits child labor in central London, your total speed would be the sum of the train's speed and your running speed. That was all good until Einstein appeared and decided that the fabric of space-time warps based on your speed and mass and number of child workers in your frostpunk campaign. These ideas were introduced through the theories of special and general relativity, in 1905 and 1915 respectively. And while developing them, Einstein came up with a couple of thought experiments, in order to prove just how badly he messed up with our perception of reality. Thanks to CuriosityStream for sponsoring this video. Before we dive into the experiments, let's get over the basics of the two theories. As Galileo used to believe, if you are running from your responsibilities with speed v1, and the blue whale Rebecca that you are on is also running but with speed v2, your total speed would simply be their sum, v1 plus v2. We also know that the speed of light is a universal law of nature. And then we have the principle of relativity, saying that the laws of nature are the same in distinct frames of reference. All these three points seem reasonable. However Einstein argued that they can't all be true at the same time. If Rebecca had a laser gun shooting forwards, the speed of the beam should be different from Rebecca's perspective and that of someone who's on the ground. And we know that light should be constant. So what kind of shenanigans is Rebecca up to? That blue whale, never trust them. Einstein allegedly thought of this contradiction at 16 years old, shortly after dropping out of high school due to his distaste for their rigid teaching methods. His question was, what it would be like to run alongside a beam of light. Einstein reasoned, he would be able to look over and see a set of oscillating electric and magnetic fields hanging right next to him, seemingly stationary in space. However that was already known to be impossible, as such stationary fields would violate Maxwell's equations. It was only 10 years later, in 1905, when Einstein figured everything out. He came up with a different thought experiment. Imagine there is an observer close to some railway tracks as a train goes by at a fraction of the speed of light. But this time, each end of the train is struck by a bolt of lightning just as the train's middle point is passing the outside observer. Because the lightning strikes are the same distance from the observer, their light reaches his eye at the same instant. So he would correctly assume that they happened simultaneously. For the second observer inside the train however, the light from the two strikes would have to travel a different distance because of the movement of the train. The light from behind would arrive later given the extra distance, and the one in the front faster. Therefore, the second observer would conclude that the strikes were not simultaneous, and that the one in the front actually happened first. This is when Einstein realized, simultaneity is relative. The order at which events happen can be different for different observers, and none of them would be wrong. But don't come at me with images such as claiming there can be several truths. One of these people is wrong. Someone painted a 6 or a 9, they need to back up and orient themselves, see if there are any other numbers to align with. Maybe there's a driveway or a building to face, or they can ask someone who actually knows. People having an uninformed opinion about something they don't understand and proclaiming their opinion as being equally valid as facts is what is ruining the world. No one wants to do any research, they just want to be right. Pardon the rant. If you are passionate about constantly learning and keeping your brain in shape, make sure to check out today's sponsor, CuriosityStream. They are a subscription streaming service that offers thousands of documentaries and non-fiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers, including exclusive originals, ranging from physics and space, to history and politics. My recommendation would be, the beginning and end of the universe series where Professor Jim Al-Khalili tackles the biggest subject of all, where did the universe come from, and where are we going? Go to curiositystream.com slash science file for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and non-fiction series. Use promo code science file to save 25% off your yearly subscription at only $14.99 a year, which is a very affordable $1.25 per month. Links in the description. Back to special relativity. As we previously mentioned, simultaneity is relative. And to illustrate how ridiculous this is, let's look at another example. The bar and ring paradox. Suppose you have a rod traveling upwards to the right towards a ring. The rod has a length slightly bigger than the diameter of the ring, so normally it shouldn't fit. Yet if the rod is traveling at a fraction of the speed of light, 
From the ring's stationary perspective, the rod would experience length contraction and would then be able to pass through the ring. The paradox however arises when we check the traveling rod's perspective. In this case, the rod would think of itself as stationary, and instead, the ring would be traveling fast towards it. And because of the high speed, it would be the ring that experiences length contraction. So from the perspective of the rod, the ring would become even smaller than originally, so the rod would definitely not fit through, even though it does if we change the perspective. So what's going on? We can't have both the rod passing through and not passing through. This is not Schrodinger's rod. We should have one global outcome. The resolution of the paradox again lies in the relativity of simultaneity. The length of a physical object is defined as the distance between two simultaneous events occurring at each end of the body, and since simultaneity is relative, so is this length. Although the rod and the plane of the ring are parallel in the rest frame of the ring, they are not parallel in the rest frame of the rod. The uncontracted rod passes through the Lorentz contracted ring because the plane of the ring is rotated relative to the rod by an amount sufficient to let the rod pass through. Has your brain been distorted enough yet? Similarly to this one, here's the ladder paradox. Imagine shooting a ladder at a garage at near light speed. The ladder is longer than the garage, which also has both doors open. Due to length contraction, from the garage's perspective, the ladder has shrunk enough to fit inside the garage. While inside, the door is closed for a moment. Yet if we look from the perspective of the ladder, the garage has shrunk instead, and when passing through, one would expect that the ladder is too long to fit entirely inside, therefore the garage wouldn't be able to close its doors. The solution to the apparent paradox is as in the previous cases, relativity of simultaneity. From the perspective of the ladder, the first event is the front of the ladder approaching the exit door of the garage. The door closes, and then opens again to let the front of the ladder pass through. At a later time, the back of the ladder passes through the entrance door, which closes and then opens. We see that, as simultaneity is relative, the two doors did not need to be shut at the same time, and the ladder did not need to fit inside the garage, even though from the garage's perspective, there was a time where both of its doors were simultaneously shut. These are all just some of the many examples of seemingly paradoxical situations arising from special relativity. There is the Bell spaceship paradox, the man falling into great paradox, the twin paradox and several others then shine light at the distorted nature of reality that we exist in, yet are not used to comprehending. The human mind is used to the conditions in which it evolved. Hunting deer and painting in caves did not subject the human brain to situations dealing with length contraction or relative simultaneity due to near light speed movements. It took humans tens of thousands of years and several paradigm shifts in thinking in order to arrive at our current interpretations of space-time and the way reality works. And most likely our current way of thinking will be replaced by subsequent paradigm shifts in the near future, rendering obsolete a lot of what we think about reality today which seems like common sense at the moment. So don't act surprised once we find out that the fabric of space-time is made up of quantum Pringles.